Well, it's Christmas, and I probably wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't mention the godfather of Christmas B-movies, Santa Claus Conquers the Martians. The problem? Everyone talks about Santa Claus Conquers the Martians. But why? And more importantly, what do I make of this? So, since I assume everyone at least knows of this movie and I don't want to do any work because it's Christmas time, I'm making a little Christmas quickie. Er, Christmas quickie. Nah. Christmas Quickie. Why does everyone talk about this film? Well, I mentioned in Shopping Mall how a name can grant a film a lot more attention than it might have otherwise gotten. And when I think of ridiculous titles, the first name I think of is Santa Claus Conquers the Martians. Honestly, it's a title that sounds a lot funnier than the movie delivers. Not that the movie's bad, but it sounds like Santa's straight up invading Mars when ultimately he fights like two Martians with toys. But the reason this gets more attention than, say, Jesse James meets Frankenstein's daughter is that A. This was on Mystery Science Theater 3000 in what I'd argue is one of their best episodes, and definitely one of their most popular episodes, and B. This is an actually kind of funny movie. I've watched this multiple times with and without the riffs, and I still find funny parts. Santa Claus Conquers the Martians is a 1964 children's film directed by Nicholas Webster, who directed two episodes of Bonanza, keeping this well within the six degrees of giant Gila monster I got going on. Apart from its infamous name, MST3K appearance, and appearance in multiple best worst movies of all time list, it's also notable for being the big screen debut of Mrs. Claus, a character who would go on to be played by Cynthia Rothrock. I mean, it was also the debut of Pia Zodara, one of the most infamous actresses in all of bad movie history. The story is as insane as you'd expect. On Mars, children are put in super advanced learning programs, so by the time they're 10, they're practically adults. But this makes them sad, and in watching Earth TV, they begin yearning for a Martian Christmas. So Kimar, the King Martian, brilliant name by the way, gets a crew together and they go to Earth to kidnap Santa. At first they're confused by how many Santas there are, so they enlist the help of the two most generically named kids in the universe, Billy and Betty. I say the universe, but the boy and girl Martians are named Bomar and Gurmar. And to finish off the Martian family, the mom Martian is named Momar. Anyways, they give the Martians directions to the North Pole, but the Martians figure it's too risky to leave the kids there, so they have to come too. Once they've kidnapped Santa, Voltar begins feeling Santa would make the children of Mars weak. You tell him, Voltar, Mars was the god of manliness, he didn't raise no pussies. He makes multiple attempts to literally kill Santa in a kid's movie. This merely lands him jail time, and he runs and hides once he's on Mars. Back on Mars, they set up an automated workshop where Santa pushes a button to make toys. And Santa's super passive-aggressive about it. How are you feeling today? Tired? No, no, I'm not tired. But my finger is. It's been pressing buttons all day long. Then Droppo, the goofiest Martian, decides he wants to be Santa and dresses up in the new suit Lady Momar knit. But after he gets kidnapped by Voltar, Santa and the kids lead an attack against him and Santa declares Droppo would make the perfect Martian Santa. And he and the kids go home. I don't know about you, but that's a pretty bizarre story to start with and the absolute lack of budget adds to the humor of an already off-the-wall concept. One of the more infamous scenes features the worst polar bear ever put to film. You can literally see the zipper, but for something as hailed as the worst movie of all time, there's stuff I really like about it. Like, it confuses me when movies where Santa actually exists that there are people who don't believe in him. Like, you didn't buy these presents, where do you think they came from? Not in this film. In this film, Santa's on the news. They straight up try building a spaceship to chase down the Martians and get back Santa. He's an established part of this universe. I think my favorite thing is the acting. While many of the people involved aren't necessarily great, there's two roles I think stand above the rest. Vincent Beck as Voldar is hands down the funniest thing in this movie. He chews scenery like crazy and has tons of great lines. Stay away from those children. That'll be easy to do. They've escaped. <laughs> oh, that one's nothing. Check this one out. You can't dismiss the wisdom of centuries. I can. There's straight up a scene where a kid asks about their antennas and Voltar calls him stupid. Are you a television set? <laughs> stupid question. That's not something you get out of most Christmas movies. 
The other amazing performance is John Call as Santa. I absolutely believe this guy is Santa. He's so charming and energetic. Even when things seem to be going bad for him, he smiles and keeps on having a positive attitude. Which makes the insanity going on around him so much weirder. It's like a Mel Brooks film. The element of realism makes the humor that much more out of place and that much funnier. Overall though, I do think this film is a little overrated as a so bad it's good movie. Not that it isn't so bad it's good, it just seems to get a lot more attention than I feel like it would without such a crazy title. There's a lot of long, boring stretches and jokes that will absolutely make you groan. Still, if you're a fan of bad movies, this is Bad Movies 101 and I recommend it. And I even more recommend the MST3K version. Either way, it's the perfect way to cheese up the holidays. Why don't you, uh, relax? You're going to relax permanently.